Welcome to this Stateless Code video. And in this video, we will be setting up and installing Ruby and Ruby on Rails in a um, Ubuntu 24.04 desktop environment. Uh, this is a fairly new copy of Ubuntu, and I installed it in another video, which I'll put in the show notes page here. If we run history, you can see that I've only got 18 items in the history of this OS. Uh, most of them are just updates, and then I've installed uh, bzip2, tar, and VS Code here. Uh, so that's pretty much all we've got installed here. So it'll be a uh, starting with a clean slate on a fairly basic install of Ubuntu. Uh, what we'll wind up doing is we'll install dependencies for Ruby, uh, then we will um, add some additional optional dependencies for dealing with action text. Um, it's depending on your system, it may or may not be trivial to do those um, additional items. So I'll, I'll do them as a separate thing and you can skip them if you don't plan on using action text. Uh, then we'll use uh, RVM to, um, we'll install RVM, use RVM to install Ruby and then we'll install Rails. Uh, after we install Rails, we will create a sample app using SQLite 3, uh, and then we'll also install MariaDB and um, create a sample app using the MySQL adapter, and then finally we'll use, uh, we'll install PostgreSQL and create an app doing that. Uh, what you'll note here is that we uh, are dealing with Rails 7, and I'm not going to install Node here. So um, by default, R Rails 7 uses import maps, and you can, um, if you go stick with kind of stimulus and the default stack there, you don't need to do it. I do have another video where I install Node using NVM, uh, and um, you can check that video out if you wish to do so. Um, but setting up a, a JavaScript build beyond import maps is going to be out of scope for this video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paste in command here. We'll hit clear so that you can see what the command is and I'll put it in the show notes page as well. Um, I had a series of videos back in 2021 when I installed Ruby and uh, Rails 6 at the time. Uh, most of these dependencies have stayed uh, mostly stable. There, there's one um, uh, libgconf2-4, I think, which no longer exists in uh, Ubuntu 24.04, and if you tried to kind of just take the existing um, set of requirements and um, combine those and, and kind of copy and paste them, uh, it would fail and you'd have to remove that one. Uh, what I kind of merged the set of install commands from this and then the uh, Go Rails tutorial on installing Ubuntu 24.04 uh, kind of took the, uh, the union of those two uh, sets of packages there. Uh, and then in addition to this, it'll install a bunch of other uh, recommended apps. Uh, so I'm going to kick this off. Uh, a lot of times these, the non-interactive parts of these installs, I'm going to pause the video, let them occur, and then we'll resume once it's done. So we'll kick this off. And we will pause and let this take place. All right, we're back, and that installation of dependencies has completed successfully. A couple things to note. I'm going to scroll up in the history here. So after the, you can see these are the, uh, the set of all the new packages that are getting installed here. Um, let's see here. It selected Git instead of Git core and then pulled in a bunch of dependencies and did those. So uh, that part is done. And now we're going to install those optional dependencies 
for action text and active storage. Uh, if you aren't planning on using it, uh, you can skip this part of the video and go on to the next chapter. It's only like three packages, but it takes a bit to install, so we'll pause and let this do its thing as well. All right, so our dependencies for action text and active storage have been installed here. Now we're going to take a look and turn to installing Ruby. And to do that, we're going to use RVM, uh, Ruby Version Manager. Uh, there are other options available to you here. Uh, Go Rails suggests using ASDF uh, for this. So uh, that's another option that you have available. I've been using RVM for a while now and haven't yet um, have the critical mass to switch. Um, I, I don't use, I use, um, I think RBM, ENV on my Mac, but when I'm working on Ubuntu, I typically use RBM. So we're gonna do that. Um, gotta install some GPG keys. I'm here and then uh, instead of using the script here, I'm going to add a uh, PPA repository. automatically did a, an apt update there. Uh, so now we can do sudo apt install rvm. And I'm sorry, I should have hit clear after that last command if it didn't. If my camera feed cut that off, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll pause and let this complete. All right, so we've got RVM installed and you can see there's some information about post install configuration that needs to be done. And this part is important. If you don't do these um, things, including rebooting your machine, uh, you're gonna run into some issues. When I did this video back in 2021, uh, kind of was spinning my wheels. And um, so I'm gonna, apply what I learned in that video. Video. If you want to see me struggle through it, uh, you can go to that video and um, watch the struggles, but um, we're going to try to do this a bit smoother. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the RVM group is added to our user. Oops. So we're going to uh, use the user environment variable to do this. Now, if I do groups, it was code. You can see RVM has been added there. Uh, we're going to source the RVM.sh. And then we're also going to need to create a directory structure for this in the home directory. So we're going to hit clear so you can see what I'm doing here. So the last couple of commit commands that I've run, user mod with the user, groups stateless code, source the profile.d uh, rvm shell file, uh, and now we're going to make this directory structure. So home directory dot rvm is a, kind of a hidden directory and then user and then installs. And now uh, in order to actually install a Ruby with rvm, I'm going to exit out of here, 
close the browsers and do a reboot of the system. Uh, not just a log on, log in, log out, but I'm going to do a full like restart here. Uh, so I'll initiate this and then pick it back up once the system is rebooted. All right, so I've rebooted this uh, virtual machine and we're back. Um, I'm gonna go into the terminal now and we're going to do our VM install. And this is early July, 2024 when I'm doing this and the latest version of Ruby is 3.3.3. So that is the version we shall use. We'll pause and, oh, I'm being prompted for the user's, root user's password here. Looks like it, added two more packages that weren't already there. Um, so we will pause and let this run. All right, so we are back and we have successfully installed Ruby. Hit clear. Do RVM list. dash dash default to set that as the default Ruby and we're getting fussed at here so we're going to hit um, copy this command here bin bash login we'll try it again We're using it Ruby dash V gives us 3.3.3 .3. IRB works. All right, so uh, we've got Ruby installed. The next thing we're going to do is install Rails, which as of the early July 2024 when I'm recording this, um, it is uh, Rails 7.1.3.4 is the latest prod version. So when we do gem install Rails, that should install that version. Maybe I should have paused for this too. I guess while I'm installing, uh, note that I've got a whole series on getting started with Rails where we go through the, the getting started guide and then do a, some additional stuff with action tests, text and stimulus and some other things. Um, so um, check out our other stateless code playlist. We have some stuff, Pure Ruby making a gem called Nerd Dice, where we roll dice. We've got the getting started with Rails 7, and then we've got nerddice.com, which is a, uh, a Rails app that manages tabletop role playing. So that looks like it succeeded. We'll clear again. Rails v 7.1.3.4. We're going to create a new directory here.
Rails apps. And the first, so we're going to try Rails new here. And we're going to call this one SQLite because we're not going to, we're going to use the, that is the default database that we've got here. Looks like it's successful. We'll hit I'm typing clear here to uh, so we're gonna CD into that. And we're going to try start the rail server. Go in our browser to localhost. Port 3000. And we have succeeded. Stop the server for a minute here. Make sure we can create, hit clear, Rails DB create. All right, and those already exists or did development database gets created when you do the rails new app uh, with SQLite. so uh, we will now move back and uh, this is kind of a choose your own adventure so now that we've got it rails up and running if you want to use SQLite 3 you are done you can go and develop and follow the um, Rails 7 getting started guide or follow along with uh, the stateless code videos that walk you through that. Uh, but we're also going to give you some options in terms of your database. So the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna install MariaDB and then after that we will install PostgreSQL. So uh, we'll do MariaDB first. To do that, we need to install MariaDB server and libMariaDB dev. If you don't do libMariaDB dev, you won't be able to get the MySQL 2 gem to um, install and connect to it. Uh, if you, this will install as of July 2024. Uh, this is the default kind of package that comes with Ubuntu. Uh, MariaDB 10.8, if you go to MariaDB.org, I think they've got, they're into the um, version 11 of this. Yeah, 11.4.2. So if you've got, um, that's kind of the latest general release version that you've got there. If you want to do that, you can follow the instructions on MariaDB and install a newer version. For the purposes of this, 10.8 uh, is good enough, so we will install that. I'm also going to oversimplify the provisioning of user access here. So I'm going to create a user and I'm just going to do 
uh, grant all privileges on star dot star to that user, I would not recommend doing that even for your actual local development environment here. Uh, we're just going to oversimplify there and um, just to get it up and running and connected. Um, but um, I would recommend granting least privilege to your MariaDB user for your Rails app. We'll pause and let the installation finish. All right, so it has successfully installed. We will hit clear on our terminal again, and then go to the super user. the root user so you can see 10.11.8 um, um, so yeah 10.11 is, is the version that's running here um, so uh, now we're going to create the user we'll use for our rails app and I will just create user create user name at, um, typically you'd wanna restrict this to a host name. And then we'll do, and all is on star dot star to Percentage. Again, uh, I wouldn't recommend being this permissive in your privileges in a real app, um, just going fast to um, facilitate getting up and running. All right, and then I should be able to exit out of there. clear exit out of being the root user. We are back in our normal Rails apps directory here. So now we're going to do Rails new my SQL and this would work just fine either for um, installing MySQL or MariaDB, which is a fork of MySQL. Um, so we'll try to see if we got things working the way we needed them to. Looks like MySQL gem installed correctly. Hit clear. CD. SQL open up the in theory oh, here it is it's just coming up slow um, so we're opening up the project in VS code so that I can edit the database.yaml. Yes, I trust the author. The author is deal with that another time. Config database.yaml. Username will be Dateless Code. Password taxation is theft, save that, 
and see if we can Rails DB create. And it looks like it succeeded. Rails server. stop this show that it doesn't work start it back up and we can see it um, completed the the root route and the, the hello rails splash screen all worked so that completes our my SQL version of this will shut down the server, type clear, go back a directory. Now we're going to install PostgreSQL. And this will install Postgres uh, 16 is the, um, the version that shipped with Ubuntu 24.04, which I think is the latest uh, major version there. Um, so we're installing PostgreSQL and then libpq-dev. Pause and let this install. All right, so Postgres has been installed. We'll hit type clear here. And um, we need to create a user make it match the login user here. So instead of Chris, this will be state less code. And now we should be able to rails new postgres. SQL. This will pull in the PG2 or the PG gem um, and install that. Clear here, cd into the directory, we'll refresh our browser to show that we don't have a server running, rails db create, so if you match it to your logged in user, um, you don't need to mess with the database.yaml like you do with MariaDB for this uh, and then Rails S and to quote the old splash screen yay you're on Rails so uh, that will can preclude what we are doing here, just kind of the basics getting up and running with Ubuntu 24.04 and Ruby on Rails. Got everything installed. Um, specifics will change from app to app. Uh, you can uh, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that you get the, um, the new Rails videos that we produce. Uh, check out our Getting Started with Rails 7 series if you want to learn more about how to develop using Ruby on Rails, and we'll see you next time. Ruby on Rails 7 is out. Code along on a guided journey through the Rails 7 Getting Started Guide and beyond with test-driven development. There has never been a better time to learn Ruby on Rails. Hit the ground running with the newest version. Go to statelesscode.com slash getting started with Rails 7 to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video.
be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.